Uh, hello, Copenhagen. Uh, good. Well, I guess it's noon for you. Um, I'm very sad that I'm not able to be there today. Um, and uh, hopefully this presentation will go okay. I can't really hear you all, but I can kind of see you. So hopefully uh, something awkward doesn't happen and I just kind of continue uh, <laughs> continue stupidly on, onwards. Um, yeah, I'm going to talk about Dino. It's a project I've been working on for, for the past couple of years. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, let's get into it. Uh, I think we can all agree that the web has become the medium of human information and that the web will still be here some years from now, maybe five years from now, uh, if, if not 10 or 20. This wasn't always the case, you know, back in, let's say, 2010, it was maybe looking like mobile apps were potentially going to replace the, the web. But I, I think we can say with confidence now in 2022 that uh, the web is is here to stay. Uh, you know, I, I don't know how, how far out we can say that, but but you know at least at least a couple of years, and uh, that's actually a lot more than you can say about a lot of other technologies. Uh, because we can say that the web will be here, the protocols that make up the web will be here. That is HTTP, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. JavaScript is inherently tied to the web. And therefore, I think it's clear that JavaScript will still be important many years from now. Uh, and because of this, JavaScript has in some ways become the default scripting language, if not the default programming language overall. And yet so much of the tooling and libraries around JavaScript remain hopelessly sophomoric. Uh, it's, this, this language requires, this language demands more of our attention and better tooling and better infrastructure around it because we're going to be living with it for, for quite a long time. This is not a language that anybody chose and decided was was <laughs> something that we should build the society on it's this organic thing much like the web itself that has had humble beginnings and and kind of grown into into the thing it is uh, i'm interested in in building on this um so i i i just want to in the abstract describe what I see as my ideal software stack, uh, and naturally how how this how this relates to to JavaScript. So my my dream stack is one that reduces boilerplate. Ideally, very small apps can be defined in a single file. There's so much to the tech, the modern technology stack for for servers or or other software. There's you, you build on top of public clouds, which have vast amounts of infrastructure. Uh, you build on top of uh, languages, runtimes, libraries. Uh, because we're, we're sitting on top of so much stuff, it's important that we're able to focus on the problem that we're solving and not have to deal with a bunch of uh, superfluous uh, configuration or... or uh, uh, boilerplate. Um, my dream stack would use JavaScript, the, the universal scripting language. I think scripting languages are not appropriate for every use case. Indeed, in my day-to-day -day life, I am using Rust mostly, but that's because I, I work on a runtime. Um, you know, if, if, if I think if you're working on an operating system or a database or, or a scripting language runtime, uh, I think it makes sense to drop down to uh, native native languages like C++ or, or Rust or, or Go. Um, but I think for the vast majority of, of uh, business logic out there, uh, scripting languages make a lot of sense. It's, it's kind of the, the most terse way of, of expressing an idea. And most things are, are most, most problems that we encounter as software engineers aren't actually computationally bound. They're 
engineering time bound actually. And uh, uh, I, because of that, I would reach for a scripting language when it comes to uh, many, many different problems. <clears throat> um, in, <laughs> when, when I built Node, uh, uh, it was all about being able to do asynchronous IO. I think that's, that is quite important still, but these days uh, it is uh, table stakes. Um, so uh, optimal HTTP server performance, being able to handle many concurrent clients, thousands of, of concurrent clients is, is table stakes these days in, in 2022. But of, of course this is, you know, should be said, uh, we, we, we want it to be performant. And I, I think the development tools like code formatting or uh, linting or or integration with your editor, this this should all be defined, and it shouldn't be something that you need to choose uh, one by one and and spend a lot of time on. I, I think development tools have have progressed a lot in recent years, and uh, it's it's important that that those things just work. I think it's also to, important to say that, that the dream stack kind of extends into the cloud because if you're if you're writing servers, you 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 must think about where where these servers are going to be deployed to. There there is no world in which you're going to be running like I did uh, when I was a teenager. A a <laughs> have have a, a uh, have a desktop computer in your closet that, that is actually serving your website. Not only is that not optimal, uh, it's, it's not cost effective. Uh, it goes down. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's slow. Um, we, we need to think about how our software stacks, how our server software extends into the cloud. This is, this is the, this this infrastructure must must be thought about, and so I, I my dream stack would would be serverless. That is, that it's it's free for low traffic demo apps. If it's not getting any requests, it shouldn't be costing me anything, uh, and it's it's completely managed. It's just going to stay up, uh, and it should scale. Of course, uh, if if. For whatever reason, my, this the the site gets gets on Hacker News, or or there's a flash sale on my e-commerce site. Uh, I should be able to scale to to handle that load. Um, an important latency optimization is is being able to run your application server close to the users. That is geographically close. We are. Uh, the the era where you have a single application server in US East uh, and maybe a CDN around that is 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 I, I think over. You you really need your your application running everywhere, uh, and I, I think this is this is kind of the new frontier of uh, of server development. Uh, that that last bit of latency counts, especially if you're a user in Australia. Uh, you don't need to be making speed of light uh, bound requests uh, out, out to uh, US East or, or wherever the, the application server is, is hosted. Uh, those, those, we should be able to respond to requests in a local data center. Um, cold starts must be fast. Uh, and it shouldn't have any any config or as as little uh, config as necessary. Uh, and I'm I'm thinking about all of the terraforming <laughs> that that is necessary to to uh, uh, interact with with GCP or or AWS these days. It's it can be a lot actually, uh, and I think this this can all be be done quite a bit better. So. Uh, uh, Dino is 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 JavaScript for professional in software engineers. Uh, this is this is my attempt to to implement this stack. Uh, it is focused on being simple, secure, and optimal. Um, I'll, I'll, I'm going to jump into jump into some demos here. It's a lot of words, but uh, so it's simple because it has a bunch of this tooling uh, built into it. So 
For example, TypeScript comes out of the box. This is very important for building complex applications. Uh, so uh, type, type annotations in, in JavaScript, I, I, I think are, are standard practice at this point, but getting this all set up can be quite difficult in Node. Uh, this all works quite well in, in Dino. Uh, it has common tooling built in, it has a standard library. You can pull in third-party modules from HTTPS or NPM. Uh, this, this is a new feature, which I'll, I'll show you in a second. There's a little code sample there. Uh, you can use Dino compile uh, to build all of, all of your dependencies into an executable uh, and, and uh, kind of a self-contained binary. Um, and uh, browser knowledge transfers easily because Dino spends, uh, does a lot of hard work to adhere to, to browser APIs. So al although Dino is, is server-side JavaScript, it, it feels very much like a browser. Uh, let, let me show you this, this example here. Um, so I've actually got this, uh, this list up here and hopefully you all can see that. So what you can do in Dino, and excuse my, my Vim here, I'm, I'm uh, uh, not, not acquainted with the new VS Code stuff. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, in, in Dino, you can uh, uh, pull in any NPM module just using this NPM specifier, NPM colon specifier. Uh, and here we're, we're pulling in Express, which is kind of a legacy uh, node uh, library, uh, and we're pulling it in at version four. It has, has kind of Semver semantics and you do the typical expressed hello world here. So, so you construct an app and when you, when somebody requests a uh, slash, uh, you, you respond with hello world, you listen on port 3000, and then you print that you're listening. Let's, let's try it out. So Dino run because of the NPM, uh, 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 specifier. I need to to give unstable. We're we're going to we're going to be stabilizing this in uh, in probably a month or so. So so a little bit of a preview feature here, um, and you can run Express. I'm going to talk about security in a second, but but we need to allow network access, and we need to allow read access here to to the bot. Actually, no, I don't think we need that. We definitely need network access. So uh, uh, ignore that. I'll talk about security in a second. So when I run this, uh, it, it needs to go download a bunch of dependencies. Oh yes, it, it does need uh, CWD access. Uh, I wonder why though. Um, so Dino, I, like I said, I'll, I'll get into security in a second, but but you get these kind of prompts here that say, oh, this, this Express program is, is trying to uh, access your current working directory. Do you want to allow or deny that? I say, no, it's going to crash and say, say permission denied. Um, I can run it again and say yes. Uh, and I guess it also requires an environment variable called no deprecation. Also, yes, and trace deprecation and actually all environment variables, which is a little unfortunate. Uh, but for some reason, Express is doing that. Uh, but that, yeah, now we have now we have a little server running that that can respond with "Hello World." Um, so uh, again, all all of this kind of summed up in 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 a simple little little file here that that uh, that completely expresses what what that program is trying to do. Um, Secure, but so by, by default, Dino runs in a, in a sandbox, and and you kind of got a hint of it uh, with with that example. Um, so uh, uh, unlike in in Node, you you uh, you uh, do not need to allow remote code execution to install a module. So in, <laughs> whenever you in, in, if you've used Node, uh, you might have used npm. And when you uh, npm add a module, this is literally doing remote code execution from random people on on the internet. Uh, this this is no good, uh, and there there have been all sorts of problems with this. Dino Dino, uh, uh, of, of of course, you know we're doing server side JavaScript, and you need to interact with the with the with the operating system. But Dino at least 
provides these gates for you to to know what what this this code is doing, and and you can decide whether you want to allow it or not. And uh, Dino is, is also written in, in Rust instead of C++, and so this is avoiding a whole class of, of memory safety bugs. Um, <clears throat> we strive to make Dino optimal in every benchmark, uh, and it helps that Dino is built on the shoulders of giants. Uh, uh, V8, which I'm sure many of you know, is, is, uh, is, uh, originates in, in Denmark, in, in Aarhus, um, uh, and Rust. Uh, uh, both both uh, amazing pieces of, of uh, uh, software. Uh, so so uh, we're going to be publishing a, a comprehensive uh, analysis of, of Dino's performance, but it is pretty good. And we try very hard to, to make it quite good. Uh, and I, I, I won't name any names, but... but uh, but some some people like to cherry pick benchmarks here and, and kind of give give the wrong uh, wrong impression of Dino. Dino is quite fast. So so in in this uh, benchmark here, uh, we're running uh, WRK two uh, and and using a little Hello World server with a thousand connections and uh, seeing how what what sort of throughput we can get from Dino. Uh, and what what sort of memory usage uh, we we are seeing during that that uh, that um, uh, benchmark? Uh, so again, uh, uh, stay, watch our blog uh, for for a full benchmark uh, suite coming out very soon. Um, Dino is oh, the formatting here is not very great. Uh, I, I mentioned web standards, so so uh, Dino is is very much like a web browser, and in in kind of orders order of uh, of importance here, or maybe order order of uh, least surprise. Uh, uh, these are some of the things that you can find in in Dino. So global this, of course, WebAssembly comes out of the box from from uh, from V8. We have Web Crypto. Uh, we have Web Workers. We have transform stream, uh, in, including uh, uh, all sorts of, of interesting, uh, if, if you know what that is, things like uh, compression stream uh, also, uh, event target, abort controller, location. I, I, I can't see your faces, but if, if there's any like web aficionados in there, I, I, I hope to see some smirks as you uh, <laughs> are. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, as, as we kind of go down this list here, form data, request and response, of course, fetch, uh, window, window.close, local storage, and web GPU, uh, among many other things. Uh, so so we, we are really trying to adhere to, to how the browser defines JavaScript, because of course the browser is always going to be the future of JavaScript. Uh, this is, you know, in, as I mentioned at the beginning, inherently tied to to uh, to human infrastructure. Uh, we participate in in standards organizations like TC thirty nine and uh, Winter Winter CG, uh, which is a new uh, group that is uh, trying to define a common server side. Uh, uh, common common server side JavaScript uh, interoperability, uh, and we work with this uh, with, with Cloudflare among others. Um, you can you can read more about this at wintercg.org. Um, <clears throat> so so I, what I've been describing here is is a local a local development runtime, uh, much like Node. Uh, uh, but we take the in, the 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 pieces of of Dino, and uh, we we have we build a, a product called Dino Deploy, which is really building this this uh, serverless system uh, for uh, for really geared geared towards JavaScript, uh, and so. What this does is, is you essentially give us a function, JavaScript function that takes a request and returns a response. 
potentially calls into WebAssembly, potentially imports modules. Uh, and what we can do is, is host this at the edge in, in 34 data centers worldwide. And we can do this very optimally. Uh, and so let me, let me give a little uh, demo of, of what this might look like here. Uh, so this is Dino deploy. And what we can do is, is I, I mentioned there's, there's GitHub integration, uh, uh, but I'm just going to use the little playground here to, to toy around with something. So I'll delete this. So import serve from HTTPS, Dino land, STD, HTTP server.ts. This is our, our server library. And this serve function takes a request and returns a response. Response. And we'll just say, hello. Uh, and when I click, uh, so on, on, the, on the right side here, uh, this, this has provisioned us a subdomain cloudy squirrel32.dino.dev. Uh, and when I click uh, save and deploy here, what it's doing is rolling out this code, essentially uploading this code to, to all of our regions. Uh, uh, and this thing is now persisted worldwide. Um, so the cool thing about this is that this is essentially a, uh, a row in a table somewhere. It is super cheap for us to persist this forever. Let, you know, responding with, with just hello is, is kind of dumb. So let me make this kind of a dynamic response. So maybe I can, put the date here, for example. So I'll, I'll save and deploy it again. Uh, again, this is full deployment. So this takes, I don't know, five seconds or so, but this is, uh, this is truly being deployed worldwide. And in the logs here, I can see Europe West 4, which presumably is, is some people there in, in the audience uh, hitting this. Let me change the subdomain to uh, go to conf. Uh, okay, so now we have go to conf.dino.dev, and just to just to examine this a little bit, uh, let's look at the headers. So it does HTTP two. Uh, I'm here in New York City, so I'm I'm getting this from US East four, uh, and yeah, of, of course, every time I hit this, it is dynamically creating this response with with a different uh, a different date each time, right? So it's it's really running this JavaScript at, at the edge. And uh, uh, so, <laughs> you know, maybe this seems a, a little trite and, and simple, but I, what I would argue is that this, this generalizes to arbitrarily complex uh, sites. And uh, we, can do, we can do quite, quite complex things like my blog, for example, is, is on this, or dino.land is on this. Uh, uh, or, or a bunch of other uh, 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 websites. Uh, so we can do chats and, and all sorts of stuff. So, so this is really what, what we mean, what I mean by, by this, this dream stack. Um, Dino deploy is, is kind of acts as, as a white label serverless system uh, uh, that, that powers, uh, for example, Netlify edge functions. Uh, or super-based edge functions. So it is, it is kind of behind the scenes uh, uh, handling uh, quite a bit of, of infrastructure, uh, quite, quite a bit of, of uh, services. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, you know, the, what I, I'd like to argue is, is that there, we're approaching a post Unix future here uh, that serverless edge runtimes like Cloudflare workers and like Dino deploy are very fast and very cheap. And the performance and simplicity achieved by using BA isolates for multi-tenancy, the, 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 the simplicity, the, the, the benefit here is, is coming from the fact that we're using JavaScript as, as kind of the container abstraction here. So for, for that little JavaScript function that I spun up, it, it's, uh, I didn't. We didn't provision a Docker container. We're not. We're we're not uh, uh, doing any any uh, heavy processing here. This this is this is really like opening a tab. So so uh, you know we we push out that that little bit of code to to all all of the servers, uh, all of all of our regions worldwide, and uh, 
essentially at, at that point, all, all we need to do is, is kind of open a tab uh, when, when a new request comes in to, to handle it. Um, so it provides kind of this, this new container abstraction uh, uh, when compared to say uh, Linux containers. Um, and this, this allows us to do it very, very cheap. Um, and I, I, I think um, my prediction is, is that to maximize the utility of serverless, web frameworks are, are soon going to be built on these post Unix primitives rather than on Unix primitives, uh, i.e. Node, node, node style uh, uh, systems. So to put this all together, uh, I, I wanna show you a, a web framework that, that we built to, to work with uh, Dino. Uh, called Fresh, and this is uh, a new piece of software, and it is built to be very fast. Uh, so it renders everything just in time on the server. Uh, it doesn't ship any J JavaScript to the client by default. It uses uh, islands-based uh, uh, architecture for, for client interactivity. Uh, it automatically inlines uh, CSS with, with Twins. Um, Tailwind um, <clears throat> has TypeScript out of the box, doesn't have any configuration. Uh, and I, I want to uh, uh, wrap up here with, with a little demo of this. Um, so <clears throat> let me clear my, clear my screens here. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is, is, is uh, uh, um, I want to compare this to create React app. So what I'm going to do is, is run the, the, uh, the, the fresh install script. So fresh.dino.dev, uh, when you do Dino run against this, uh, it's kind of like the, it's Fresh's version of create, create React app. So my fresh app. And on this other terminal here, what I'm going to do is, is do mpx uh, create, actually create. So I'm going to do npx create React app, my React app. Okay, let's let's just compare these two things. I, this is this is a fair fair comparison. I've, I've kind of cleared my caches be, beforehand. So we'll we'll start the the npx. Oh, we gotta install this. We'll give it a fair head start here. On on this side, I'll I'll start running my um, Dino stuff. It's it's downloading some of the dependencies, and it's basically done now. So. We want to use Tailwind. Yes, we want to use VS Code. Okay, it's it's done. So I can go into my fresh app here, and we can go Dino task start to to get it running. Uh, I guess it has to install a couple of other things, and now now we have something running on localhost. So let me just paste that in here. So here's the fresh app running. Um, by the way, create React app still still going here. Uh, and let me just just edit one of the routes here. So this is this is the home page, and it says welcome to fresh, welcome to fresh. You know, with with some little interactivity, uh, and we'll just say go to uh, and save that. And of course, it auto updates. Um, and yeah, I, I, I'd like I'd. I'd encourage you to check check out what what this uh, what this looks like in in uh, in DevTools here. I think you'll you'll find that it is uh, quite optimal, actually. Um, I actually is uh, create Re I really wanted to compare the sizes here, but create React app is actually still installing. And I'm running out of time with my conference talk here. So uh, maybe I'll just um, uh, <laughs> just du dash, dash sh, sh my fresh app here. Oh, maybe maybe that guy's done. And maybe I'll do uh, my, oh, oh, finally. OK. So and on this side, I can do du sh my React app. This one is 339, 20, 29 megabytes. Uh, this one is, is 84 kilobytes. Um, so it, I think the, the point of this, this demo here is that uh, there is a lot that can be optimized. Uh, and uh, 
the, there, there's still a lot to do in, in server-side JavaScript and uh, uh, the, the, the server-side infrastructure that where, where we deploy it to in, in, in the cloud uh, and, and on the web frameworks. And uh, we, we, are, we are working on that. Uh, and uh, if, if you're interested in working with us, we're, we're hiring.